All right, folks. It's a long time coming, but we're finally getting into the finals. It's going to be starting off on Proxima Station. You see Maynard uh, rubbing the invisible soap between his hands. Very excited for this, of course. I'm getting my hands ready. I have a feeling that this is going to be uh, it's going to be some interesting games. I very much doubt this is going to be standard TVZ. You know, it's weird though. I'm like 50/50 on that, right? Like, part of me hopes that this is standard games because it'll be very fun to watch. But the other part of me loves disgusting gross stuff. Gumiho's willing to proxy. Sue's willing to do weird things. I think no matter what happens, I'm going to be very happy with these finals. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I think in a perfect world, we get a bit of both. Because it is going to be a best of five. And hopefully it goes all the way to game five. I'm going to get a couple weird games and a couple great macro games. And then game five can be whatever it wants. Because we've already gotten, you know, two of each. Yeah. Well, tweets That's are out, guys. For. Do me a favor, whether you're on uh, Twitter, you got a lot of followers, little followers, whatever the case may be, hit that retweet button, hit that favor button, hit that like button, and share with everyone what's going on as we get into these yeah. grand finals for this week's Alima League. Spawning in the top right, we have the Blue Terran from Psystorm Gaming, Gumiho. <laughs> He's allergic to Terrans as well. I didn't even know what to do with you anymore. In the bottom left here, this is Sujwa. Telling you is the bit boss until somebody kills Nexikuro and gets him away from me. I'm gonna keep sneezing. Yeah, Nexikuro is actually killing Rifkin very slowly, oh. with still nearly 11,000 hit points remaining. Uh, Ripple Carry, what's up, man? Welcome to the Bay Straight TV fam. That Twitch Prime sub. That Twitch Prime sub. Of course, if you guys don't know, Twitch Prime rolled out recently to pretty much I'm gonna say worldwide, but like 200 plus countries announced yesterday. If you don't know much about Twitch Prime, the best thing you can do is tell you to twitchprime.com. It'll show you how to connect your Amazon Prime account. It'll show you how to get set up with it. There's about a million, zillion, billion benefits, but the best one is that you get to sub once a month for free to any channel of your choosing. And the creator of that channel still gets money as if you subbed for, like, a regular sub. So it is win, And the win, ads win. thing. And the ads thing, but we've talked about it to death, and people are going to kill me if I keep talking about it. So uh, it is just... There's very few times in life, much less on Twitch, where you get a win-win-win, where it's three wins across the board, but viewer, Twitch, and content creator all benefit from Twitch Prime. So please, guys, if you got it in you, consider subscribing with Twitch Prime. Get it, get it, get it in you. We have a Reaper expand here for Gumiho. Pretty interesting, considering the map, but you do get a little bit of information. You get to see if the, uh, you know, if there's a third hatchery and that sort of thing. It's generally what you get to scout with the Reaper before it dies. Well, Gumiho actually is pretty good at using his Reapers too. I don't think anyone's going to be referred to as the next Beyond anytime soon, but uh, he's actually been very good at controlling this Reaper, getting in, getting a drone kill, leaving, coming back, getting a drone kill, and like over the course of five minutes, getting like six or seven instead of just <laughs> like dying for two. And I, I, I like that a lot about him, but one thing I'm kind of sitting on my hands for. And I don't think it's necessarily likely to happen, but Gumio has actually been playing mech a couple of these games since the patch. And I'm wondering if he's willing or even considering doing that versus Sue here in the finals. There is, yeah, I, I, I touched on it a little bit when we got on Ascension to Aya, but there is a really sick mech build um, that Terran can do, which involves a lot of Cyclone, early armory, and just Hellbats with plus one on that armory as well. You upgrade actually, those Cyclones. Yeah. And you make it, it's very, very, very powerful. On that note, too, Gumiho has not been the only one exclusively doing this, but he's been doing it very consistently where he'll go for the Hellion attack. He'll pair it up with a Banshee. Um, the odd time, he'll elevate them up. But he does seem to be very comfortable opening with the Hellions for this. Yeah, and he is going to open with Hellions again uh, with that reactive uh, factory. And I, and I fully expect to see a tech lab very, very shortly. Um, for that star board. Um, unless maybe maybe Medivac, yeah, I was going to say, maybe Medivac play because there is yeah. a bit of room for the Hellions to get ferried into the main or even to the back natural. And it's very, very annoying in the early stages for the Zerg to deal with. Well, whether you're playing to Elevator or throw down an Armory in timing for Hellbats, the point is you can get a lot done in the early game if your opponent's not ready for it. But Sue, like, the, the biggest thing the Reaper got to see was that Sue didn't make a bunch of legs. There weren't, like, three or four Queens in play. Yeah, there's going to be now. But there's a lot of freedom for these Hellions to actually get a lot of damage done here. And I'm very worried for Sue. Yeah, Queens, I mean, there's no creep connection between the... I mean, there's a little bit, almost creep connection between the main and the natural, but the third and the main are very, very difficult for these Queens to waddle on down there. And if there's a Hellion Fairy very far away from these Queens, 
Well, that's going to be a barbecue drone line. Yeah, so that's going to pick up and go to the main. This will also draw the queens back, giving a freedom for the reaper to get behind this mineral line too, but looks like Sue's ready for this. He kind of had an idea something was coming, even though he didn't see it directly, so playing it safe, yeah, pretty pull some links back. Clever girl. Bunch of drones coming out here for Sue. He feels like he has enough army to deal with this, and rightfully so. He's got a good number of queens. The lings are high oh. enough in count, and he's pressing the Hellions against the wall as well, making sure that they don't have an opening. Oh! Medivac taking a lot of queen spines there, or queen spits, whatever, yeah, before queen. they get deflected. The, the, that's a pretty nice micro out of Gumiho, but ultimately doesn't accomplish much at the end of the day. What are the queen's attacks called? Uh, acid, spines, and talons. Well, huh. Blizzard, you went... You went really deep into the creative budget for that one. Yeah, I, uh, I can see them giving uh, $80,000 to Chris Metzen to make sure that they get a, a very, very nice lore <laughs> uh, name there for that for that queen attack. Seems like money well spent. Like, there's nothing about the queen that's, like, acid at all. Why would they be acid spines? Y yeah, I mean... Because the creator of the name was on acid. Got it. All right, check that it. one yep. off the list. Back Mystery at home. solved. You know, Sim's finishing up. This is not a mech build. It's a lot of extra barracks coming down. But most importantly, the third CC is already done. So Gumiho's not gearing up for like a two base all in. He's actually looking to play this out. Yep. And that's great. That means we're going to have a macro TVZ. We can see that uh, Sue is going for the Roach Ravager path here. Well, I actually, I'm wondering if it's Roach Ravager, if he's going to throw down Hydras into the mix. Those have become really popular amongst players oh. recently. I mean, he is getting clear reconstitution. Uh, we have we have the Liberator coming in in the main. He's going to get a few drones here. Not a quick reaction there from Sue. Yeah, it pulls back. Six drones total. Not bad. Um, but the thing about the, the... like Even if you are going for Hydras, you can never go straight to Hydras. You need an in-between. And that's where Ling, Bane Ling, or Roaches tends to be the case. But Sue, it, come on. Sorry, he's just losing a lot of drones here, this Liberator. <laughs> I know. I'm, I'm sitting there watching it like tick away. But the thing is that Medivac is also not dead either. So he's been consistently Whoa. dealing with multiple angles of attacks here at Gumiho. Yeah, these link, there's a couple links across the map that get an SCV kill, but the real story is the fact that Gumiho has managed to force Sue to use a lot of lava to remake into drones here, because, I mean, he's not that far down workers versus the Zerg, and he has a third CC up. There's no fourth hatchery yet for the Zerg. So this is a good position to be in for Terran. Right. Um, going back to the composition choices, though, uh, Roaches, I think, can get a lot done, and we've actually seen through Nurchio against players like Bion and otherwise... Roach, Ravager, and Infester, I still think is like one of the best compositions in the game when done correctly. But, that being said, I like the Spire, I like the Banley Nest, I like- oh no, I don't like the lag. Is this me? Maynard? Uh, Fruit Bunker. Uh, My man, Fruit Bunker. That's Naruto, that is poor Take TV. Oof. It's a really expensive and wonderful looking apartment, or, you know, um, venue that they have of Take TV. I don't expect it to have you know, internet problems, but hey, happens to all of us. Oh, I didn't even see this tweet when I woke up, but, you know, good guy Twitter is showing me nine hours later, or seven hours later in this case. Uh, Zomgrub tweeted a picture of her and her mom taking the train to Busan. Oh, uh, that's cute. I didn't see that. Yo, um, the... I really did not enjoy our train trip to Busan when we went because we took the economy class, whatever. Um, taking the first class was such a big difference back, though. I, I was like, okay, if I'm not going to be riding with Sombria, but I don't want to be squished up against some stranger, right? Uh, oh, mm. he doesn't like out. Okay. Huh. Uh, but the difference of first class and not was was not like the difference of like elegance on a plane, but it was like just leg room, you know, like breathing room. It was really nice. Yeah. Actually, it, the first, I think on a train, the difference between first class and economy is like the difference between premium economy and economy in a, on a plane. Just, no, it's just more like the difference better. between economy and uh, storage. <laughs> wow. Great, so I've, the, been the on, I've been on three trains my whole life. I'm an experienced driver, okay? Yeah, I can I can tell. I can tell. <laughs> uh, we have a, uh, a deflection here against this fireball. The Sue's got uh, enough road drivers just to bat him back for now. Although Gumiho is starting to pepper in those marauders. He is uh, getting his 2-2 very quickly here with the Zerg actually switching over to melee. There's also a There's second upgrades. factory coming down, too. This is really important for production Ooh. for Gumio. He's waiting for that Marauder, though. Cancels it to j tanks. just get the tanks going. He doesn't want to waste time with it. I like that. Yeah. Immediately tanks. Obviously, that's exactly what you want as a turn. You do not you do not want Widow Mines against this kind of army. And, uh, oh, Fruit Bunkers. The cat 
The internet cable, a likely story. The StarCraft emote looks so sad, the one he, he used. <laughs> yeah, it does, doesn't it? The StarCraft emoji. Oh, Bio getting batted away on creep here. Gets deflected by the Zerg, and he has a double drop here, heading into the back of the natural. Not a lot for Sue, but he is coming in here with a few Banelings. That being said, the drop didn't actually fully unload, so it kind of works out in a weird way. Yeah, I mean, he didn't lose all of his Marines. Some of them are going to live, and it looks like they're going to be able to boost away just in a second or two here. Sue's uh, getting getting the muted production out now, so he's going to have those very effective... Uh, you know, I mean, they have to be his answer against Medivax. And it makes dropping a little bit more, uh, a little more testy for the, for the Terran. Double tank production here with a ton of bias. It's just straight up marine tank. I like it. I I feel very strangely about Sue's composition, though. I like the mutas. I like the Banelings to go with them. But the roads just feel like out of place. But more importantly, like a bit of a waste, too. Because he put upgrades into them. Yeah. Uh... Obviously, I think when you want to go Roach and Roach Ravager or just Roaches, uh, they 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 marry up very well with Infestors. But um, Mutas, yeah, like th them in conjunction with Mutas are a little bit strange. I do agree. Well, what's going to work out kind of nice though is if he does decide to make some Ravagers, they can help take out the tanks, and there's going to be quite a few tanks in play. Yeah, I mean he is producing out of two two factories with a tech lab, so a few tanks at a time. We're going to Stim coming in here, getting a bunch of these creep tumors. A little bit forward with the Marines, cost him a couple of the Banelings, but tank set up on the backside. Now he's got a fallback point. Draws an actual line in the sand with these tanks. Yep. These two tanks uh, spread up apart as well to make things a little bit harder for the Zerg to bile down. And they're <laughs> stacked up. It's the splash damage. Some Hellbats coming in, because why not? Put them Hellbats in there. Oh, it's the Hellions from earlier. Just looks like too much Zerg. Oh! Those are, those are the same Hellions from earlier. He didn't make new ones. <laughs> Ah, uh, this is looking a uh, bit grim for Gumio, though. He's got to be careful. Same time, though, Sue's getting a yeah. bit far off a of creep, so that you like that he pulls back, too. Yeah, you don't want to get a boat in here. you got to take it easy. Uh, overextension from both players will end this game. Well, not not so much for Sue, i got to say that. I think Sue can throw a little bit away here, but Gumiho with an overextension. If he gets his army crushed here and there's a bunch of Zerg left over, it is it's going to be tough. Although he does have a fourth base to pull back on. Uh, these tanks are doing a pretty good job so oh, far. Oh, yeah. Three splits here from Gumiho. Banelings rolling in here with Roaches and Ravages at the back and Mutas as well. The Banelings connecting very nicely with the Bio and this does get cleaned up. Looks like a couple Medivacs might go down as well for Mutas Target Fire. Well, I mentioned not being too sure about Sue's composition, but it's working. Yeah. Guess you don't knock it till you tried it. Yeah. He is very, very far off creep now though. Tank's going to be a little bit dangerous for Sue. Planetary as well. So someone in the chat was asking, um, are medevacs first class or economy? And I really feel like it depends on how much health they have when you get into them. <laughs> uh, didn't someone make the, like back when the United thing was a bit more topical, they said that medevacs are a lot like a United flight because you just get, you know, you get unloaded. Ha. Huh. Yeah, it was a really bad, uh, it was a really bad topical meme back in the day. The Banelings are rolling in here and Gumiho is, uh... Yeah. Doing very nicely against the Banelings. But uh, there is a lot more Zerg down here. Uh, it's uh, not looking not looking so good for our Terran yeah, hero. It's, it's not, not crash hot here. He's down a fair bit in army supply. And the Zerg is starting to press the issue here. In fact, going to take a tank out with the Biles before leaving. Uh, he had a pretty nice drop going with these Marines. But the Queen's focus fired them down. Or the Medivac, that is. So... That's going to be into these boys. They do kill the queen on the way out, so it's not too terrible, but it's no longer about small little trades. I mean, resources lost is somewhat even, but Sue's taking much more one-sided fights. I think the big yeah, thing, too, is like, remaxing on Marines is whatever, because you know Banelings will take care of them. Removing the big, chunky units like the tanks, the medevacs, that's what's winning Sue these fights. Yeah. No, you're absolutely right. The, the medevac is what lets the bio exist. Without it, it's not it's not so strong. We have uh, just a little bit too much here from Sue. Beating back Gumiho. He doesn't even care that he's this far off creep. He's still just chasing the Terran back, eating away at those Marine counts. Um, and Gumiho, with his fourth base, you know, he has a lovely econ. He has a lovely income. But he is, like you said, just producing Marines and tanks right now. And medevacs, I suppose. Throwing in concussive shell, because why not? 
I wonder if Sue's choice to stay on this though, like the infestation pits only kill me down there, right? I'm wondering if his choice to stay off of Hive Tech was intentional or forced. Because while this looks really great for him, we all know that every Zerg player gets caught in that transition to Hive Tech and then they die to Terran pushes. So by kind of delaying this for as long as he did, it let him play in that mid game a lot longer. But now we're at this point where, you know, Gumiho's on plus three weapons and Sue can't afford to not be on Hive Tech. And he is trying to rectify that by getting an infestation pit, no doubt Hive, soon to follow. Um, there it is. Swarm hosts. <laughs> <laughs> he just makes 30 swarm hosts and I just quit. I just throw my headset down, go to bed. Um, but we have, this is a very nice position for these siege tanks here of Gumiho. It's gonna make it a little bit tough for the ground forces to get to them. Of course the Mutas still can, but there's a lot of bio between those tanks and between the Mutalists here. And they are starting to close forces. That's a lot of banlings here from Sue. And it takes out a lot of the Marines, but I don't know if that's still enough. The tanks are still pushing from that low ground. Meanwhile, you know, dropping the main is going to pick off some mutas. It's the only thing attacking into this. Uh, quite a few mutas are actually going down to this. Uh, meanwhile, this hatchery, the gold is going to get targeted down by Gumiho. And the hatchery at the top being dropped on as well. You know, Sue's still sitting Gumiho. close to Max, so I'm not worried for him just yet. But Gumiho just got some really good damage done. Something he needed to do. Yeah, he's he's clawing, he's clawing out of this pit that he's in right now on this TVZ. Wait, did you say clawing? Clawing, yeah. Man, that's not how it sounds like. <laughs> I'm <laughs> it took sorry. Took me a moment to like my, do the my Aussie accent. translation. Yeah, that's like I'm the sorry first word. I'm sorry for coming. I'm sorry for coming where I come from, Rifkin. No, I just my it, fault. it caught me off guard because I think that's the first word in like years of knowing you. That's like the first like, hearing you cast. Right, it's the first time yeah. I've ever been like, wait, what word was that? <laughs> <laughs> Clawing. C L A W I N G. That's not what I think you're saying. I think it's I apt. It's apt. Oh, a bunch of bio here. Tank in that front line, but so many banelings. That said, though, big reinforcement of bio from Gumiho. Somehow, he just keeps taking better engagement after well, better engagement here. It's not even somehow that crazy because this was a fight where Sue's missing a good chunk of his army. Like the Mutas weren't with this. They'll kill an orbital, apparently. You get a lot of SCV kills, too. But he had so yeah, much of his army up here and not down here fighting. Oh god, yeah, this is devastating. For, yeah, and because of that, now he loses his hatchery and, and Gumiho takes this position here. He's on creep. Oh. A little bit dangerous, but he has so many units. The tank's coming in here. They're not if, sieged to the top, but they're still doing good damage. If Sue holds here with the Mutus, he wins though, because that was Gumiho's main floated over. That wasn't like an extra command center he had. Yeah, no, and now that the Mutus are here, oh, this is making things a little bit tough for Gumiho. Yeah, that's... The mute is making the big difference in that last fight there. So he's got a planetary and two orbitals right now. This is not a great spot for Gumiho. Lost a lot oh, of SCVs no, no, no. on that transfer too. The rest of the oh, army's going down. GG. Yeah, I mean the planetary think... will stop the ground army, but not the mutas. Nope, these mutas don't care about that planetary and how strong it is. In fact, none of the planetary, army does. Planetary, don't shoot up, son. They say screw it, they go for the medevacs, they dive in. All the medevacs now are moved. Gumiho can't afford to replace those. I don't know why he was scanning the bottom right. <laughs> Yeah, it's just just consolidating his loss here, having a look at how many boss, uh, how many bases Sue has. Dude, but his Sue is absolutely won this game. There it is, GG. His APM dipped from like hundreds down to fifty. Like you knew those hands came off the keyboard to type GG. Yep. But all right, that uh, that's a very excellent. That's game one. That's a long <laughs> game one, but that's a good game one. That's gonna send us into map two pretty quick. We're gonna play a quick ad break though. We'll see you guys soon for more of the finals when we get back. All right, we're going to hop directly into the game because we are, of course, still in the Lima League Grand Finals. And while we've been talking about all these other wonderful things like Twitch Prime and blah, blah, blah today, do you want to give a final reminder as we get into this game about the Patreon? If you guys want to support this tournament, see it grow bigger and better, or just keep it going, either way, you can get some cool rewards. You check out the Patreon by typing exclamation mark Oli Patreon in chat. And if you see Oli Moly, I've got any questions, feel free to ask. Absolutely right. She's a lovely lady, best admin, and this tournament is a huge blessing to the Korean StarCraft 2 scene. In the bottom right here, this is Sue, winning game number one. And his opponent, it was a hard-fought game number one at that. Uh, the Red Terran player, Gumiho, from Sistrom Gaming. Yep. And I'm sorry, guys. Uh, I, I this There is a zombie grub cast right now. It's just that I'm not wearing makeup. Uh, that's the... Uh, yeah, people are like, 
Rifkin, where are you? Do, don't you want to smash that pussy? I'm like, no. Have you guys seen her without makeup? She looks like she's got dreadlocks and a yeah. beard. It's ridiculous. Yeah, she looks like she looks like a caveman, and she sounds like the Muslim. <laughs> I, would, <laughs> I don't know that I would ever default say you sound like the Muslim, but I can kind of see it like a little bit. Yeah. Dude, you don't you don't hear like every time I'm in a Twitch chat with like two or more thousand viewers there's always one guy that's like english isn't his first language well in, in so fairness they can't tell accents and they're just like that's the muslim in fairness those are the same people who think zombie girl is scarlet when she's talking and i'm like have you ever oh heard scarlet God. speak like hello yeah, it's uh, night and day we see a three racks reaper opening here from gumiho yeah this is actually something weird because we've we've seen these three racks work really well on maps like sequencer and I want to say like Odyssey, where you get the wall off that leads them to secure bases. But as we can see, it takes a little bit of extra effort to make this work on Abyssal. But it'll still be a full yes. wall off. Yeah, absolutely. Um, we see that the Lings don't have an opening for counterattack. I mean, if Gumiho has got the uh, finger on the trigger, as it were, to be able to bring up that uh, that depot, there's no real run by threat. Also, the the fact that these Lings need to be here would deal with the deal with the fact that a lot of Reapers soon. Yo, keep casting. I'm apologizing in the chat right now. Oh yeah, I just <laughs> I just read what you uh, what what happened there, but uh, for you guys that aren't seeing ads right now, I'm casting a game. Uh, Reapers still coming in the main, starting to eat away at this Ling count for Suvin. Nice micro. He's keeping some of the hurt ones alive. Uh, Reapers coming in three at a time now, and they are starting to join forces. And this is now a force to be reckoned with. Su taking this very very seriously. He's making 14 more Lings. That being said, Lings are still going to be a struggle, to say the least. He doesn't turn around to execute the Queen, though, and I think that's a mistake. I know I agree. survival is of the uh, utmost importance right now, but that Queen needed to go down. Now she might get transfused. She may get transfused. I, I don't know what he was Pulse. doing there. He didn't throw grenades down. He was just playing silly bugger with the Reapers, I feel. Yeah, now they're very, very damaged. Lings chasing them down. Going to pick off a couple more Reapers here. Uh, I mean, Gumiho is not beyond. But, uh, you know, he's, he's a pretty good Terran, but this Reaper opening is starting to lose its teeth. Also, I think by now we're back. I just want to apologize, guys. I hit the add button at the totally wrong time. My brain is spaced out from just constant sneezing, and like I said, it's a little bit loopy for me. So I, I, I haven't made that mistake in like a year. I hope you guys can accept my apology because uh, we never, ever, ever want to run ads over game time. That was 100% a mistake on my end, and I will do my best to make sure that doesn't happen again. I'm really sorry, guys. Old gravy, baby. You're only human, and you're also full of mucus and, and whatnot, so... It makes things even tougher. This third hatchery getting touched on a little bit by these Reapers. Um, not using their grenades for extra DPS. The grenades are their survival tool against the Lings and the Queens. There's that Hurt Queen taken off. There it is. Got her eventually. <laughs> I'm like a little bit mad that she wasn't like taken care of better. Like there could have been a lot more <laughs> to keep her alive. <laughs> she could have been a contender. Just one transfuse and she would have lived for the rest of this game maybe. Who knows? We'll never know now. You know what they say, you transfuse it before you translose it. <laughs> Is that what they say? <laughs> uh, it's it's, it's a full reproduction now by the way. It's the five, yeah, actually, five racks. My yeah. god. Gumiho has just recently done this too. I can't remember who he's playing against, but he went five racks before Factory and even a third CC. So, I mean, he's getting the double engineering base. There's, believe it or not, guys, actual follow up to this. But for the most part, this is so heavily dedicated. If Sue were to crush this, Gumiho would be so far behind. But he's not yeah, going to crush it anytime soon. Yeah, it's not an all in, but it's very. Oh, like, forget what I said. Well, the links with a massive surround with the grenades. Giving the Reapers a river root, but now they're stuck. Well, it's not quite the Beyond Bounce House, but this does still work out for Gumiho. This was so close to being game-endingly bad, though. Because Gumiho, for all of his extra racks and all the potential production, has invested so much into these Reapers. And in that one instant, he had lost everything enough to almost even up the resources lost. Yeah. It's a little bit more of an interesting tale now. Gumiho is done with Reapers. He's switching over into his uh, more 
sensible bio production. He's getting his stem one one now with double uh, engineering bay, and his third CC is up in the main as well. There's there's a problem with all this stuff because like well you might have production, you might have marines. Factory is not done, which means the starport hasn't begun, which means medevacs are still like an afterthought at this point. So Gumiho, and I think Sue's got to know this too from seeing the dedication. Like he knows he has time. He can be a little bit free with the, the drone right now. I think a much more scared, paranoid, and to be honest, worse Zerk player would be making a lot of lings and banelings and like really, really worried about this immediate attack coming. But Sue's a smart yep. freaking cookie. He knows he has time to breathe. And I think droning right now was a really smart choice. Yeah, all of his lava for the last like 10, 15 seconds has just been spent on drones. And yeah. in fact, he's still droning. Intelligence Zerg, to say the least. Oh man, I don't know if that's just me, but your microphone just went crazy. Mm -hmm. Alright, bunch of Reapers. Still alive in the middle of the main, but they're, not, they're, they're starting to outlive their usefulness here. Um, and Sue... With that spire, it's getting ready for this uh, next step. It still sounds very, very robotic. It's like robotic and underwater. That's what it sounds like to me. I don't know if that's just me. We'll find out shortly. Yeah, the game sounds sound okay to me, so it might be... Might no, be no, it's, it's the mic. I saw yeah. mics for now. Um, okay. I'll explain what's going on after you guys are going to have a low quality mic for this game, unfortunately, though. That's okay. Better some mic than zero mic. You don't want me to solo cast. I'm not very good at it. Um, so, Sue is getting ready for tier 2. The spy is done now. Mutas are about to hit the hit the, hit the the deck, but there's um, not even that many medevacs out yet. Like you said, the, uh, the starport was heavily delayed by a late factory there because of the opening. It only has two medevacs out right now, with two more about to join in. His upgrade's looking pretty good though, 2-2 two, two on the way, already. Well, unfortunately, uh, to fix my issue, I have to unplug and replug a USB. But for some reason... Oh, and that, and that closes the stream. I remember this. Yes, so I'm trying to wait until we're done with this game to do that, so we don't miss out on anything. Uh, thank you, 47 is hack, stab, slash. He's like a comic book hero. Trying to save me from <laughs> Nexikuro, who's been causing all these allergies. Thank you, 47 is. Kids swimming in bits, man. That's a lot of Marines. Don't have Konami shields yet, though, but they do have 1-1. One, one. Yep. And like I said, 2-2 two, two, not too far away as well. For the Zerg, getting plus one, ju well, plus two just now for the Lings and the Banes. Uh, but the the uh, the muters, where are they now? I haven't seen them yet. Top you still the upgrades for them. Top side. Yeah. yeah. They just killed a couple of SCVs, but they're driven off by the turret pretty quick. Hmm. All right. So, Gumiho just edging on creeping. A little bit annoying here. So, uh, pulling a bunch of his army to the top right. Looks like he was expecting something else, or maybe he wants to go for a run by around the bio here. Reef is still being very effective, actually. Those, those that target fire and those and those grenades actually got a few banelings. It's still very dangerous for Gumiho. Uh, he's gonna be very careful on this ramp here. A bunch of the lings actually catching reinforcements. The mute is taking them out as well. Yeah, that's gonna be a problem. Everything that uh, Gumiho has is gonna be here. He's not getting reinforcements anytime soon. SV line actually getting attacked by lings as well. Yeah, a lot of SCVs going down. It looks like uh, Gumiho is still managing to uh, press the issue here at the front. These Widowmines being very effective for him. 16 SCVs have gone down back at home, though. Oh, he but... Get damaged, it's like, oh, it gets centrifuge! That's no Baneling speed! That's also 5 health missing on all the Banelings, too. Yeah. Oh, that's... that's uh, I always forget about Look that. Look at these Marauders. The, uh, the oh, they got Banelings. no problem. He saves them all with a pickup. Gumiho's so sick! Oh, man, that's amazing. And these Widowmines here... Sue can't engage this army with these with these slow banelings. This is this is horrible for Sue. Like, Gilmiho might not have been getting reinforcements, but Sue can't fight. Oh, a lane flank from the back. Here come the widow mine shots. Uh, the banelings finally get some good connects at the very, very, very end. 
still. Gumiho with some bio left over. Shreds through a lot of those muters. Uh, there is not much left for Sue here as far as army goes. Yeah, Gumiho's Gumi finally getting his plenty. reinforcements. You know, the Bailing yeah. is going down. He also hasn't been able to make new Bailings. It's only Lings. Yep, and that's exactly what he wants with those with this many Marines here. The Marines have 2-2. Two, two. The Medivacs are uh, out of energy. One thing that Sue's got going for him, but that's still a ton of Stim Marines. Sue's going to lose his army here and lose the game. Yeah. No chance to survive. Make your time. Somebody set up us the bomb. <laughs> GG. Hatchery goes down. Mutas go down. Queen goes down. Sue goes down. And that's going to be one apiece. Alright, so here's where it gets awkward, guys. Um, there's a couple of minutes of delay on stream. If I unplug and do this right now, you'll miss the end of that last game. So... Either you're hearing this and the stream didn't go down, or I'll be cutting out right around now as I try and time this out. Either way, we'll be back soon, and we'll see you guys uh, in two minutes. <laughs> Alright, well, we should be back. Uh, my mic will be working in a moment, guys. I don't have the right one on yet. Just give me one second here. Because things are getting fixed. All right, Maynard, how's that? Sounds great, mate. Uh, it's a headache, but the stream, I'm pretty sure, still took a hiccup. Uh, whether it did or didn't, either way, you guys are back. It's game number three. Yeah, tied up on one. My brain just got reset with it uh, for the Alima <laughs> League. Spawning here in the upper left side. It is going to be the Red Terran player from Storm Gaming, Gumiho. Yeah. And in the bottom right, this guy. This is Sue. All right, so uh, Gumio looks like he is going to be doing same, same old, same old. I think the Reapers did a lot, not in terms of like devastating. That's what won the game, but it definitely screwed with Sue. He didn't get to get away with everything that he wanted to. Uh, have to make that many lings early on. I do want to note that he was barely keeping up in drones for most of game two. Like there was a, there was never a point till the very 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 end where he was up like twenty or thirty workers. Mm -hmm. No, you're absolutely right, uh, and that's part of the reason why game one went so well for Sue, because um, he got to that late stage. He got to zerg the map, take the map away from the Terran, get that crease spread out, um, and this map with the three racks Reaper opening again from Gimme Ho, there's a there's a few spots here for the Reapers to be a little bit cheeky. Although it's not quite as abusive as a Bristle Reef as far as like, you know, the middle of the map when they're engaging Lings. But um, there is still a few spots for, for this for this build to work. I've definitely seen it work on this map. Well, Like end the game on this map. I look at this build, right? And when I do, I think of this as a lot more kind of like... Um, almost, almost like the way Maru used to do 3 racks opening and cheese. And for everyone else in the world, it was dedicated. But for him, it was almost like an opening. And that's kind of how I feel like the way Gumiho treats this. Until he throws down the extra two racks, and you're just like, what the fuck are you doing, Gumiho? Come on. Come on. Uh, yeah, I mean, he was five racks free free for a little bit <laughs> in, the, in game one, which is pretty cool. Um, you see the Reaper number one coming in here. Sue dealing with it with the right amount of links. Something to wait. pepper in a couple more. He's not super aware. He doesn't know that this is multiple Reaper just yet, but now he does. See, so Overlord sees a second Reaper. And he is he's droning at the moment, but he does, you know, with his queen, have the with the two queens, rather, have the ability to bat back this small amount of Reapers for a little bit. But he's going to want to make links now with that Larva. Well, regardless of whether these Reapers get a lot or a little damage, it's not usually about these first three. It's about the six or the seven. Yeah. Oh, that's um, getting a little low. Yeah. There's no Roach Horn, though. This is what I find really interesting about Sue's playstyle. Like, he's confident enough to stay with Lings to make this happen. But, I don't know. Even Speedlings, some players out there can just get the, the perfect grenade hits. The, the, the auto attacks are good, and the Lings end up being, like, a joke at best. So it's really interesting seeing Sue's constant confidence in pure Lings. But he does bank up a lot of them from behind. And there's a surprise. He's coming in. Yeah, he's, he's coming in here to try and catch the Reapers, maybe even catch some of the reinforcements. Oh. He really wants a big wrap around these Reapers. There's actually not a whole lot of space for them to hide, but they are going to slip away. The grenades keeping them alive for now. There's some 
Uh, wow, they're going a little bit deep here. There's some flip for them to abuse, but one gets caught in the edge and taken out. These lings are down low ground, taking them out. There's no lings in the high ground, but there are queens to shoot at them, and another Reaper goes down. So, this only starts feeling really badly for Gumeo because he did cut out of this much sooner than he did last time, and Sue may have been expecting a much bigger dedication, hence so many lings. Mm -hmm. Now that Gumeo falls back at home, like, he's still protected behind a wall as long as that depot's up. Sue so shouldn't really be able to get much done with it, and Gumiho, uh, I think if he starts a third CC, he's going to be in a fantastic spot. Yeah, I agree. Uh, having a starport already right now is fantastic for Gumiho, uh, and he's getting a, you know, he's getting all these add-ons at the front. I mean, the add-ons are, uh, uh, what do you what do you call it? Like a little bit precarious at the front there, but he does have Reapers ready to grenade her off these Lings. He's pulling up some Marines as well. Lings are going to try and bust through, but whoop, the grenades actually. I wonder if he did that on purpose, the depot down with the Reapers, because it looks silly, right? But that may have been like the shoot me instead of my, or attack me instead of my tech lab, attack me instead of my reactors. Mm -hmm. Oops, some nice grenade connections there. If you guys are hearing this, by the way, if you wouldn't mind just telling people in chat to hit the refresh button. I know that when the stream hiccups, it doesn't automatically reset and Twitch is a bit stupid like that. But um, yeah, this is definitely back live. Like we're casting this. Yeah, this is live. I'm, I'm watching it on my other screen. It's up. It's run. And Gumiho is getting a uh, armory here, so I'm uh, I'm feeling like there might be a Hellbat push coming up here. There's no engineering bay, no upgrades or anything like that, so it certainly looks like it. Uh, it wouldn't be a bad way to brute force the follow-up. It's going to be certainly surprising, and if there's no banlings and it's all links, then these Hellbats are actually going to be amazing. Far better than Widowmines could ever be. Quite right. And Sue droning up very heavily now. He's nearly at 60 drones already. In fact, he's going to surpass that and get up to 68. Once, the, once all the drones hatch out. That's a pretty healthy economy for the Zerg. Uh, that said, though, he is still on pure Zergling until that Banley Nest finishes. And there is going to be a Hellbat Marine push here. Uh, Stim will be a little way off, but oh. Hellbat's still very scary. Saves the Reapers. That's kind of cute. Yeah. Actually, that was, like, was that... Cute. that was actually really important. Uh, all yeah, these extra the grenades, grenades are very good. Yeah. And again, Banling Nest isn't done. This timing for Gumio is actually so sick, because even if Sue starts making Banlings right the second as he is, uh, well, actually, he hides them in the back. I was going to say, Gumio might get on top of them before they even hatch, but he's distracted with the queens at the front, so he's not looking for them, and there's a lot of Banlings that are hatching on the backside of this. Yeah, these Banling connections are going to need to be amazing. The Reaper's getting taken out. No grenades from them. Oh, this is bad for Gumio. from Gumiho. Is it enough? Not by the looks of it. Not by the hairs on his chinny chin chin. As he reconsolidates for reinforcements, though, it might be okay. Mm, so he's yep. making 30 more lings, though. It's a I lot actually, of lings. I like these liberators that are coming out, too. That's going to help a ton. Hellbats doing a good job against the lings. Give me hope. Picking up. Getting a hot pick up there on those Hellbats. Keeping them alive. But Sue is beating back this reinforcement. It's just a trickle of Terran units here. And that's just too much. Give me hope. Decides that he doesn't want to play the game out. GG. Alright, well, it's good for Sue. Yeah. Puts him ahead now. 2-1. But it is a best of 5, not a best of 3, so he's got to win one more game to close it out. It'll be Gumio's map pick. Um, yeah, th <sighs> this app. This is why I really get fucking mad at this sound card issue thing, because uh, when the stream hiccups and restarts, guys, like a lot of stuff doesn't come back and people are like, oh, went for 2,000 viewers to 600 and those are getting accusations of view bots or dumb comments and blah, blah, blah. But uh, it's just unfortunate because we shouldn't have to restart it at all in the first place. That being said, um, our passion doesn't die, guys. One of you, 100 of you, 1,000 of you, I don't give a fuck. We're here to cast some StarCraft and share these games with our friends and you guys get to uh, join us for that. So those that are still here and still watching, we really appreciate it. But the thing that's most frustrating for me is my XSplit broadcaster shows that there's still zero viewers tuning in. And, like, clearly I can see on Team Liquid it says about 700. People beforehand, we had about 2,000, I think, before the stream died. And then I'll XSplit shows zero. Like, the inconsistency here is just so irritating. <laughs> yeah, it's across all the boards. Uh, I'm seeing 1,000 on my end for uh, for viewers. But whatever, <laughs> like like Rifkin said, it's uh, the, the channel started with passion. It'll end with passion. I think... Uh, like, the thing is, all broadcasters know when to be concerned about their viewership. And you'll have people in chat be more concerned than any broadcaster ever has been about viewership, right? Like, 
Um, I'm, I'm thinking back to the days where we go live, like, only only 40 people are watching? Is this really base trade TV? I'm like, yeah, dude, the stream went live like two seconds ago. Calm down. <laughs> yeah. Actually, I had a I had a really weird conversation with someone that was trying to ask whether or not you know it was one of those people that was like, oh, is it too late to get in StarCraft? Oh. And I'm like, no, I'm like, I'm like, no, 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 absolutely not. Like, if you if you hit the go button, and you play a game, you'll find an opponent that's your level. Um, like with like very quickly, and they're like, yeah, but how many people play the game though? And I'm like, I don't know. Does the player base really matter when you can hit a button and find people? Like, do you need the do you need the number? Yeah. And actually, they just they just they just needed the number. And I'm like, why do you need the number? I don't know the number. I'm sure it's like you know, <laughs> two hundred thousand. Maybe maybe play one v one letter. I have no idea. But why do you need this number? And they're like, I need to know. Well, it, it's funny because um, I'm glad you brought up the point about you you get an opponent fairly quickly. I, I mentioned before I got like super frustrated at Overwatch and blah blah blah, but. One of the things that tilts me is like I can, and this always draws me back to StarCraft. I think more than even my passion for the game does. I go queue for an Overwatch ranked game, and I can sit there from like one minute to like ten minutes, and it's so annoying. I watch a lot of streamers who do CS:GO. Uh, one of my favorites, Pterodactyls for the win, just sit there and queue for like twenty minutes sometimes. Like it's insane. StarCraft, I've the longest queue I've ever had was like co-op, and it's like maybe a couple of minutes at most. Yeah. I mean, team games is where the queues uh, start to start to get up there for StarCraft, but even then, it's like two or three minutes. No, if I want to play a shitty ladder game, boom, I can get there right away. But 1v1 hey, game, less than a minute. Easy peasy. Speaking of 1v1 games, we got to find one in front of us. It's the finals oh of the God. Elite League, and this is actually possibly the last game. As he's on his yep. last life, in the bottom right, we got the Red Terran player, Gumiho. Mm -mm -mm. I'm still gaming in the top left. On match point, this is Sue. You know they actually have uh, Gumiho style uh, Sistrom gaming hand towels. Yeah, that's so sick. I didn't Marketing even believe geniuses. it was a real thing, and then they gave me one. I'm like, oh, this is amazing. Like, like it's it's smaller than like a face cloth, so it's like definitely something just for your hands. <laughs> it just gets sweaty. Mom spaghetti, all that. But anyways, uh, Gumio not go with the three racks for this game, and I think this is great because it's not working out for him. I think Odyssey's a map you can get away with it on, hell, whether it's proxy or whether it's at home, whichever variation you prefer. But it's pretty clear that Sue has got not just the confidence but the smarts, and he's dealt with this now. In fact, yeah, even, uh, even in the game Gumio won, it wasn't like a clear win because of the Reapers. No, you know, you're absolutely right. Um, it was more about the decision making from that point on with like the parade push, the widow mines, choosing when to engage, what to engage with, getting the baneling nest was huge. Um, but yeah, th this is going to be a hellion opener here for Gumiho. And it's really interesting to see like, you know, in the meta right now, it's all about the hellion opener and going with a, either Banshee or a Raven or something like that. We haven't seen that once from Gumiho yet. Uh, I think the Raven. Lost a lot of its power with that auditory change. That is true. Um, I mean, it's it's major function right now, as I guess, to like beat back creep and to harass a little bit. But um, yeah, it's the the auto turret nerf did certainly hit the opening a little bit. I wish they would reduce the energy cost of the point defense drone a little bit, because like I don't think you need the functionality where it's like so cheap that you can cast three of them per raven. But being able to cast it a little mm. bit earlier, it'd be cool to see some like auto turret pushes or something, right? Just soak the queen hits, because queens can sometimes be a little bit ridiculous, but it's a, yeah. it's a fleeting dream. May your dreams never Actually, remain dreams. One of the grossest point defense turn things I ever seen uh, was, uh, I think it was Nathaniel. Actually, yeah, it was Nathaniel's. Uh, early on, he was doing these mech builds that were like Blue Flame Hellion on mass with Ravens. And Zerg players were going like <laughs> Hydras and stuff, and just like point defense drones are like, nah, taste my flames. <laughs> taste the pepper. So, yeah, the uh, Hellion opening here, and it looks like it actually will be a. Uh, or maybe he's faking Banshee? I don't know. Like, it's. it's he's, I think it will be Banshee. He's getting cloak here before the, the Banshee gets built, just making a Viking first. To get overlord kills or anything like that maybe deny scouting ah, i like that this actually. is what it, it, getting it, getting cloaked before the unit well no i'll get the viking force more specifically like you drive off the yeah. overlords a reduce the chance they even scout that is cloak right but secondly 
um, this all looks normal. And the Banshee can be a little bit delayed. Like, yeah, you might have a Spore Crawler down like we see coming, but that's it, right? Like, one, that's it. Mm. Now, this is going to be a hell that Banshee push here. And this is kind of, like, I expected this at least once in this matchup, and I'm pleased we're going to see it here for is you know, potentially the last game. But Sue is actually getting a Roach Warren, and that's going to be pretty nice against stuff on the ground. You know, Roach oh. is a little bit better than Lings against Hellbats, but uh, the Banshees, not so much. Well, the funny thing is, like, Hellbats actually deal more damage than Roaches do, and with the Splash, they're even better. So, Hellbats can technically outfight the Roaches if they're not being kited. If it's just like a mono and mono slap fest. But that's where the Banshee really yes. starts coming in. Yeah, so it's going to be a scary push here for, for Gumiho, uh, for Sue to deal with. Um, and I actually love this attack. I love it. It hits at a very, very abusive timing as well. Ooh. All these drones lining up a little bit. I All like the kind of... There's like a lazy man split. It kind of worked though because it kept the Hellions in range of the Queens and that's all they needed to do. With the Hellions going down, there's no power for Hellbats. Oh, yeah, the Banshee. Say, uh, I, oh, the Banshee he, gets he in went. here. No detection. No Spore Crawler. The drones are just dying. Uh-oh. Yeah. They're going down. Sue was not ready for this. That's a lot of drones going to go down here. Possibly even Queens as well. I mean, there are transfusers, but do you really want to transfuse a drone? I don't think so. <laughs> I think 13 sometimes... going down here. Sometimes the FU factor of that transfuse might be worth it. <laughs> <laughs> he does have a lot of queen energy. Uh, there goes the Spore Crawler, giving him a bit of a detection of the Banshee gets out of there, not before getting 15 drone kills. Yeah. Uh, and I, I was, you know, I was questioning the fact that he got so deep with those Hellions because it does weaken the Hellbat push. But this Banshee just got so much work and <gasps> damage done that I wouldn't even yo, care, man. Yo, 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 he's going back. He's going back. <gasps> Oh, the double factory getting dropped here for Gumiho. The barracks is just for add-on production. I, it's I saw not the, gonna happen. I saw the plus one weapons, and this doesn't look so weird. Because honestly, like, you'd go for this because you'd want tanks at some point anyway. So that was, for me was like a little bit of a hint. But the factories confirm it. Uh, this is kind of cool for a couple of different reasons. But here's my question, right? How, how well does Sue know how to play against Mech? Well, depends how often he hits it on ladder, and I'm guessing not too much. Yeah, I mean, some like innovations been trying to make this work from time to time, but yeah, for the most part, Mech I don't think is the go-to for a lot of folks. Uh, Liberator heading towards that main is going to be annoying, but won't be too devastating to deal with. Creep tumors have been stunted thanks to these uh, Hellion run buys too, what? which has been nice. Sorry, I was just watching Queens walk away from this Liberator, um, but they are going to pick it off. But it gets you know the, the Hellions and the Liberator combined oh. are getting a ton of drones here. Yeah, oh natural my base. God. Everybody Barbecue. scatter. Everybody do the dance. Get away from the Hellions best you can. 13, 14 workers dying. And for Gumiho, this is uh, this is pretty nice. You know, your damage yeah. with mech is gonna be so limited early on. This this getting kills like this is pretty big. Banshee's cleaning up more of the tumors. I love the immediate Thors that are coming out with this too. Uh, hopefully he doesn't go too heavy into them. But one of the biggest scares that kills mech players are like things like uh, like a spire that you don't scout. A couple of mutas come in, oh, yeah, yeah. you're dead. Like if you just have siege tanks and hellbats, and then all of a sudden the uh, the, the spire units come in, yeah. Yeah. Um, but we we see that there is actually a hydralisk and infestation pit uh, coming up here for Sue, uh, and I'm I think... wondering. I was gonna say, I wonder, I wonder if we're gonna see swarm host here once he identifies that it is gonna be a big mech push. I would hope we do because it's been proven to me without a shadow of a doubt. Swarm hosts, to some capacity, I'm not saying mass them, right? But swarm hosts are a really good way, great way to deal with a player going mech, no matter what style of mech it is. Seeing this amount of Hellions, he surely knows. More drones going down here. These Hellions are going to go down. I got six drones before they go down. Oh, but uh, three Banshees are going to get a kill on the fourth. Oh yeah, that's that's a lot of DPS from these Banshees, and that's no creep. There's no creep connection here. The Queen's gonna get down here, but a little bit too little, too late. Justice reigns from above. <laughs> oh, getting the drone again after the cancel. Nice, very very nice. Uh, Hive tech starts up, so that's what the infestation pit was for now. Might still have storm hosts come out at some point, but these Banshees are getting a good, a good amount of damage. So we've actually seen Gumiho specifically do like speed Banshee builds. No, yeah, I was about this to say, game is just like pretty normal Banshees. I was, about, I was about to say, if you're the kind of guy that likes to get Banshee harassment done, get Hyper Flight Raiders and just have like five or six Banshees the whole game just floating around that will never get killed ever. Yeah, um, just, they just outrun detection. They don't even need, it, it's like you don't even need to outrun the mutas. You just have to outrun the thing that can see your Banshees. Yeah, exactly. That's right. Uh, and and, uh, and 
Uh, Hive just about to finish here for for Sue, but his army sucks Whoa, against what he's what making. He's going for Thor drops. Oh my god. He also transformed I... these ahead of time so he could snipe overlords too. That's so sick. Uh, the single target bonus damage versus armor makes these Thors really good at removing overlords from the map. Man, I thought that Sue had no chill. Gumiho has negative one chill. This is this is like some of the most swag plays we're seeing here. Like yeah. mech for me is normally pretty boring. I don't like seeing it. I don't like playing against it. I don't like playing it. But when it's interesting like this and and like a little bit creative, this well, is this is a, it's my jam, man. I think it's really cool. I agree. But the problem is the reason you don't see a lot of players play this style is because mech units are so risky. Like you can't afford to lose these two Thors if you're playing like this. But one of the uh, cool things. <laughs> Yeah, as you say, the, the, the single target's amazing, so they can knock down a, a base real quick. But, yo, with that transformation mode already being made, if any of these Vipers pop out, the Thors will actually kill them very quickly. Vipers yeah, no, are armored right. units. Yeah, no, you're absolutely right. And the Vipers are uh -oh. You know, uh -oh. a very, very good counter against a lot of the mech army, but whoop, big run by here into the into the, the third base, rather. The Sim City might work against Sue, I don't know. Blue Flame's not done yet, so this isn't like the craziest drone roast of all time, but this still gets like another 10 workers. I mean, 10 is pretty good for a run by. Oh, a few of the subs rolling in, by the way. So we have a little bit of a lull in the action. Yeah, I guess nobody was awake earlier. That's why we had, like, no sub. We had, like, four subs this whole stream. Feels bad, man. Coming up on, like, hour five of the cast. But thank you very much to XOS Prime as well as Nikolai42. Love you both. Appreciate you. But uh, Hydra good Roach, morning, I think, like, mono a mono. Like, just in a head-on fight, couple of blinding clouds, couple of a ducks. I think these can take on Gumio's army. But that's, like, a perfect world. Yeah, and not all StarCraft games go to plan. <laughs> no, I, I'd say more often than not, we see throws and things go to ruin. That's right. But, so uh, it's actually a, it's 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 a little bit tough and a little bit slow and clunky to move this army back and forth to protect two paces at once. Well, um, it but, doesn't you know, need to be fast when he's been constantly Thor dropping the other side oh, of the map the and he kills drops. the main. Nice. What a pick up there for Gumio. Like we're just touching on that single target damage. The Thor actually, you know, if you don't react immediately to the double Thor drop, it will take out a hatchery very, very quickly. Oh, he's got to be careful, though. There's abducts. He can't sit there like this. Or Sue can yeah. just let him sit there Ooh. like this. What? There's an abduct. He needs to abduct again, though. He'll kill one if Gumi is paying attention, but I don't think he can get both. Yeah, he has yeah. to abduct again. Gets rid of one of the Thors. <laughs> that was so If stupid. my maths is correct, that takes out 50% of the damage. Um, but... The push from Gumiho has begun. He's going up the middle of the map now. He scans ahead. He sees this army of Sue, and he laughs a belly roll laugh as this army moves forward. Um, he he is going to start uh, pushing this creep back and trying to get to this high ground choke so that Sue needs to go into mech if he needs to if he has to engage it. That extra base armor, by the way, really coming into effect with that Thor. That Thor actually probably would have maybe even died in past iterations of the game. Three queens did nothing to it. Uh, Vikings focusing down the Vipers. Oh, this the is Vipers. huge. Yeah, the Vipers get some blinding clouds, taking five tanks out of the equation. Yeah, but, but a lot of them are still enough. alive. It's not enough. Gumiel's no, gonna no break way. this army over his knee, like Bane breaking the back of Batman. And this Banshees are still alive, by the way, Maynard. What the? <laughs> fu oh man, Gumiho is just—he is pulls literally the Banshees Bane back. Batman three. Oh my god, okay. At the end there, he pulls the Banshees back so he can focus right on the Overseers so he can bring the Banshees back in. I am just like super Kriegasm right now. That's so good. <laughs> so good. Oh, fan, I can tell. But okay. Good old um, It goes to game five. What a fucking shock. Every single match we cast today went to the ace match. And this one will be no exception. You guys are so spoiled. I can't even predict who wins game five either. This is such a back and forth series. It's so sick. We've seen those macro games. We've seen the weird games, the aggressive games. Everything that I said for like this 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 series to go as perfectly well as I wanted it to is happening. So all that needs to happen now for it to be a true StarCraft final is for the final game to end really anticlimactically and really quickly. Then we then we've done the full the full StarCraft tournament roundabout. You know, Maynard, with this game, yes. we're gonna have cast exactly twenty matches of StarCraft today. It, it felt like five. I'm having a blast. I have no complaints about it, but it is one of those moments where you're like, damn, that's 20 games. 20 games in like one day. <laughs> I wonder what would break first. Your spirit or your body? Yeah. <laughs> 
Uh, okay, you're in the lobby. That's good to see. Big thank you to Diasodi. Diaso How do you read that name? Diasiode. Fuck off, Maynard. Thank you, Diasiode, for the Fucking 29 months. Ripken. Mech Holy Boys. Shit. Mech Boys hype? That was a fun mech game, though. That wasn't that a boring, was. slow, yeah. total mech game. That was a fun mech game. Those are the type of mech games that uh, you wish were more more common. It, it would give the other yeah. mech games like a better name. It, these are the kind of mech games that if like if if Flash just randomly turned on a, a SC2 stream because he was bored, would put a twinkle in his eye. He's like, I, I consider giving up the Brood War money. <laughs> I don't think so. <laughs> <laughs> nah, as much as a lot so of the StarCraft fans wish that he that he would come back, that's uh, yep. Oh. Whoopsie daisies. We're, we don't have the right. We don't have the right. Uh, it was Sue versus Fruit Bunker. Rip Naruto. Yeah, I uh, you know Naruto's not a bad player, but I'm pretty sure Sue would have won that one. Yeah, I, I I mean if I was a betting man and I am, I would put money on Sue to beat Naruto. There. <laughs> Naruto's just like, why did the overlay change? <laughs> what the? <fuck? laughs> uh, I love it. Lol. All right, well, uh, just gonna quickly remake it. Blood Boil is the only map remaining at this point because again, well, it might be the advantage of losers pick most of the time. Uh, this map pool only has five maps, not seven. So guarantee that this was the only map left. Lazy Burrow, welcome to the Base Trade TV fam. A fresh new sub, straight out of the subway. It's warm and sticky. Warm and sticky. Ugh. Taking his first gasps of Base Trade air as he comes out the womb. The zombie up curse, obviously. What's the zombie up curse? That we get good games and that they go really long? I don't know that's, if that's, that's a curse. Like, that's, that's, that's actually called a blessing. I think you're getting the wrong word there. Yeah. Plus, we don't need no stupid zombie girl blessing. We've got Maynard and Rifkin here. Fuck off. Exactly, right? T super exactly right. Yeah. Yeah. Right? Sent, man. 100, 100. Okay, okay, fire. Well, we got the uh, correct players this time, so it's a good start. But it is tied up 2-2. This is the last and final game in this week's Alima League. It's been a bit of a longer cast than average, but that's okay because this is about right for me, and I'm quite content. Uh, in the bottom right, we do have the Red Terran player from Cystorm Gaming. None other than Gumiho. And in the top left, I'm going to give him my favorite way to refer to him again. This is none other than Sujwa. So what Forever thing... second place, but maybe not tonight. Well, it's open. It's a good chunk uh, cash, hundred dollars for the first place prize. But yo, this tilts me so much about the map. So I've got a lot of problems with the map design. I'm not a fan of right. The experimental minerals in the back. You get the extra two patches. The less minerals at the gold. Whatever. Blah blah blah. Uh, or excuse me, the gas is on the map. I mean, but the one thing mm -hmm. that tilts me. But anything else, and I love the fact that they tried to include the snow-covered buildings on a snowy map. But yeah. why not the units? It makes no sense. Like, if anything, uh, the command because, center is cooking the movies... and worrying, and it's got gears and and heat. Like this thing wouldn't have frost on it. I mean, if the engine was really good, what they could do is when stuff's sitting still for a little while, it starts to slowly well, that's accumulate snow. That's what it does. Well, yeah, but I mean, like, only like like if you park a siege tank for a little bit, the siege tank starts to accumulate snow. Yeah, that'd be awesome, actually. Well, I mean, I'd... Dominic! Yeah, I was gonna say, one of these is for you. <laughs> you got it. You got it, mate. 25 months reserve. All yours, buddy. Bruce Moose 96 with the 16th month in a row. Yo, I, I owe Bruce Moose 96. Six year long enough to be Bruce Moose 96 for the 69 months so shout out. <laughs> <laughs> or even 96 months. Oh, hell yeah, but that's greedy. It is greedy, but uh, a man can dream. Jesus, 96 months of sub, that's... Fuck, that's like... I don't even want to think about how much money that is. Also, I don't want to math on stream. I was going to say, forget Two the money. How much time that is that? That's like six years, seven years? No, that's like eight years. That's yeah, a lot of years. It's almost as long as StarCraft 2's been, been out. Someone's going to murder me. No, that's like... That's more than... How much? It's 12 months in a year. Oh god, you're not mathing right now, are you? Uh -oh. You know what? No, I'm busting up the calculator. I'm gonna cheat. All right. <laughs> Ninety-six divided by twelve. Yeah, it's eight. Oh, it's eight even. Yo, I'm so sick. I guessed eight. What's up? Come at me. You guessed eight. You guessed eight after you said seven. 
You're like, that's, that's like six, seven, eight years? Yeah, yeah, yeah. A shotgun did. Shotgun's <laughs> my favorite weapon in every game, Maynard. Yeah, they're, they're really good. Which, by the way, Especially makes me so sad that there is no, like, I guess technically there's Nova in co-op, but there's no, like, shotgun unit for the Terran. Which blows me away, because, like, every single video game out there, there's a shotgun in some variety when there's guns involved. Mm-hmm. Well, uh, I mean, there's even that song in Wings of Liberty called Zerg, a shotgun, and you. Yeah! And there's literally no shotguns in this game except for the Nova Co-op mission. You're absolutely right. Actually, that would be... Yo, that would be super sick if you could customize the Marines that you choose to build. Like, either the single target ones that attack really fast like we have now, or maybe get ones that can't shoot up, but they can shotgun blast the ground a little bit or something. A new tech lab upgrade, question mark? Yo, this is how we save the game, all right? This is what it's been all about. People have been, like, <laughs> thinking it's all with Zerg and Protoss. No, Terran's not having shotguns. That's the problem. A shotgun and you... Uh, we have an armory again very quickly here from Gimiho. Very quickly. I mean, th this looks to be a much more regular Hellbat push. This comes with the four Marines that will be able to tear down Queens. Uh, five Marines even, excuse me, and a Widow Mine. Uh, so it's not going to be so Hellbat heavy, but it's going to be otherwise heavy. Like, the Widow Mine, I feel, could do a lot if it gets that good hit. But it could also do very little. And hell, worse than that, it could even friendly fire. But there's really not a lot of units out right now for Sue, and I think that uh, parking here in the mineral line would be great, but he goes right past us and heads towards this base instead. Yeah, where the Zerglings are. Yeah, the wild unloads, but besides, thinks, thinks better of it. <laughs> Topical. Hellions coming in here can deny a creep streamer. Looks like they uh, are going to turn into Hellbats and start engaging these queens straight up. Hit, hit his own Heliobat with the grenade. That looks really funny. Yeah, that grenade actually helped out Sue a little bit there. It had a stunned Hellbat flying into his into his queens. The Widow Mine does get a bar here on the lip. I think it's just out of range of the mineral line, though. Uh, not out of range of these links. Sue, nice. nice micro. Yeah, that was like super last second micro, too. Super. Ugh. Ugh. Guys, it's like hour six. We're allowed to be stupid. Hey, can um, I get a ban on CC Geist in chat, now? please? Mods? I don't want to see any Speed Force Memer G8 in my chat. Oh. Shit's gotten ridiculous. Yeah. Nate, Nate's Get killing me. Get out of here. Nate's actually killing me. <laughs> He's killing uh, me softly with these memes. Well, speaking of killing something softly, the Vikings are killing those overlords, which is really nice. Just removing the scouting potential for Sue. But he continues to push on the front line with the Hellbats, and this is without Metamax support. Way so dangerous because he goes to the main with two Hellbats instead. I don't know if this is worth it. He loses the Metamax to the Spore Crawler? Gumi, what are you yeah. doing? Yeah. No, this is going badly for Gumiho, I think. Uh, Sue, with these lings, is going to clean up these Hellbats, and that was a lot of investment there for Gumiho for that attack and not getting a whole lot out of it. Yeah, that I I don't know, dude. I, I think going to the main was fine, and using the front as a distraction, maybe, but he ended up dedicating with both and losing everything for it. I mean, look at the resources lost right now. That, that hurts to look at. Yeah, so I, 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 I don't know the hotkey to look at it, but I can just tell by I'm watching it that that was a horrible trade for Gumiho. Horrible, yeah, horrible key. trade. Just unselect everything. Just unselect everything? Yeah, and then the bottom right shows the resources lost. Oh, yeah, yeah, okay, wow, there it is. I don't know. I, I always have something selected. Actually, in fairness, you also end up casting for WCS a lot, which uses the 3.0 overlay. Ugh. <laughs> Yeah. Also, I uh, never observe my own games. I look onto someone's camera and just sit back. That's fair. Um, yeah. I got really lazy once Once I realized you could just lock onto an observer cam. I just sat back in my armchair, Although, put on my smoking jacket, got in my glass of whiskey, and just crossed my legs and just watched it happen. Lately, it's but, a bit difficult to pull that off, though, with that stupid camera bug that's so annoying. Yeah, it does like, happen. Like for those you who know, I'm it, doing though. like a smooth. I'm doing like a smooth pan right now. But if Maynard's watching my camera, it's like all jittery and shitty for him. Like, e yeah. Um, the rotation rot lock thing. I'd figured out how to fix that though. Um, yeah. bunch of links coming into the middle here. There's enough Marines and Hellions to make sure that gets that gets deflected. But uh, the next stage of the plan here for Sue is to look like he's trans transferring out of links into Roach Tech. He's getting upgrades for it as well. This is a really awkward wall. Yeah. I actually really hate this wall, I'm gonna be honest. Yeah, this is this is a horrible wall. I'd get a production structure in there to make it look neater, but he's kinda committed now that he has that fourth depot. Dude, not even Hodor keep this wall up. 
<laughs> oh man. It looked like uh, Gumiho was going to get uh, armor for flying units and mech units, but decided against it. So it's like, I, I feel like I feel like Gumiho is uh, freaking out a little bit in this game. It's probably because of the map. Probably just hates the fact that he's playing on Blood, Blood Boil. Yeah, I would. It's the only map I have vetoed this season. I hate it. I hate all the maps, I, I, but I've only vetoed this one. I've not. I've not vetoed anything. Not yet. It takes a lot to make me veto a map. Oh, really? I generally don't care because I don't play to win. I play oh. to screw around. But uh, big drop uh, over here in the third base. Yeah, and the Zerg actually catching the Terran in the middle of the map as well. Uh, this well, drop this... at the third base isn't getting a ton done. It's got five drone kills, but it's a lot more Marines here. Yeah, They're really, not really... done. They're still alive. He actually ends up having a really great positioning there. He could have stayed all day versus Lings, but the Queens are end up being what drove that off. Gets a couple of kills over here at the gold too and picks up to go to the main. So Gumiho is not done with being relentless, but he also is defending at home against the Roach Ravager push, which admittedly is going to be tough. Yeah, uh, there is no siege tank. In fact, there is uh, no factory with a tech lab on it. He's just making Widow Mines against the exact army you don't want to have Widow Mines against. Yeah, across Ravager the Ravager Biles coming in. Yeah. The Biles can kill the Widow Mines. In fact, the Roaches can eat several Widow Mine shots. I mean, if it's A move versus A move, I favor Gumio's army because of Medivacs and the Stim, right? But that's not the case. He's maneuvering on both sides of this. Gold base doesn't end up dying. Lynx clean this up, and the Queen's come down to push off the Medivacs. So Gumio's now left with only this fight to focus on. And it looks like he will push this off, but damn, this was costly for both players. Everyone losing workers yeah. through this in the last few moments. Yeah, both players taking a uh, pretty huge loss there. Um, actually, getting a few of these, getting these ravages on the on the retreat here is very nice for Gumiho. But um, I mean, now that I now that I know that I can look at the resources lost tab, uh, this is still quite bad for Gumiho. Yeah, uh, income advantage too looks a little bit all over the place. Gumiho, you can tell where he's been dropping mules, big spikes, but for the most part, Sue's economy was doing well. The fact that they both lost so many workers, though, really makes me wonder where Sue's going to be. Because he does have a gold. He doesn't need that many workers. The wall's gone, by the way. And there goes that Widowmine shot. The wall might be gone, but the tenacity of Gumiho is not. Ah, that's great, Piles. They're taking out the other two Widowmines, and that's it for the splash damage of Gumiho's army. And in comes the Zerg! What's up, Terran? But you know what? A lot of the links go down right away, and Marauders are left to fire away now at the Roaches. A lot of them are stuck behind the Ravagers. Sue is only fighting with like a half of his army. Yeah. A, a lot of it's actually, um... Uh, where is it? Well, it was literally There's a bit stuck. of a drop in the main. Like, what ended up happening there was, like, a lot of the Roaches, I want to see, like, at least 15, were stuck behind the Ravagers, unable to get in range for the fight. Yeah, uh, it, that choke point definitely definitely made things horrible for Sue there, and he takes a really devastating trade, actually. Um, oh, give me home, maybe getting a little bit too fresh here. Well, so this is an interesting choice to make a bunch of Ravagers like this, because the Roaches take the bonus damage from the Marauders. The Ravagers do not. That's true. All oh, this gold hatchery is definitely going to be picked off by a very small force here. Yeah, he's been chipping away at this for a very, very long time, and he finally gets it, which is nice. But that being said, he's still, uh, he was feeling the burn, Gumiho, that is, up to this point. But you know what? He's bought so much time dancing around the middle of the map like this. Even if he loses these medevacs, he's got 2-2 two -two over his opponent, who's still stuck on 1-1. One -one. He's almost on plus three weapons at that. And having just knocked down the gold, Gumiho, despite all of the early aggression out of Sue, making this look like Gumiho is in trouble, I really like Gumiho's spot in this game. In fact, I'm going to say with that plus three weapons finishing up, he'll start running away with this game. Yeah, uh, it's starting to like, it's already starting to switch into his favor right now. It's all about Gumiho, this momentum, since taking those engagements in the middle of the map, catching catching those uh, roaches and ravages in that, in that choke, getting that hatchery kill. Um, he, he's been making all the right decisions from a, it was very, very, very close to losing this game. Pre-split here at the third base, just in case Sue wants to overextend. These medevacs in the middle of the map, causing all kinds of headaches for Sue. This has been like the, the sniper yeah. commando force here for Gumiho. Well, with no mutalisks, there's nothing to pick them off. Queens are so far back at home, they have to defend, like, there's nothing to keep 
It, it's not even about the fact that they're causing damage. It's just nothing can kill them. Nothing can stop them from causing damage. Yeah, but uh, uh, go, you're never, never going to hit those with connected files. Uh, Sue coming into the choke again. Vimiho still not with any tank production, but still with a ton of bio. These files will kill it, kill the Widow Mines, but it's I, I love not really about the Widow Mines. Gumio's playing with almost none of his army. This isn't, like, unintentional. He's very much trying to keep it so a lot of his army doesn't run foolishly into banelings. He unloads with the other half of it, too. As he pushes forward, it's only Ravagers oh. really that are left. And now Gumiho, he has plus three attack. He has 20 more army supply, and Su is against the ropes. He's still making roaches and lings and getting plus two armor for his units against a 3-2 Terran army. I think there really was a point in this game where Sue was was not just ahead, but looking to push to win type thing. But yeah, Gumiho, I agree. like he he played this so well. Uh, the drops were obviously problematic across the board. Um, he hasn't sealed the deal yet. Like I don't want to get too far ahead of ourselves. There's a lot of banelings. There's a lot of corrosive biles. But plus three weapons, plus two armor. There's a lot going for Gumiho, and his army. Uh, it's just so big. In fact, he's going to split up, drop over here. He's going to drop over there. And he still has a main push on this side. Yeah, this is the way to do it when you're up against a Zerg. Hit in several places at once. Sue's got all of his army coming back in here in the main to deal with this. Meanwhile, a little bit of a low ground abusive spot here for the Terran. I uh, really like the low with. ground a lot, actually. Yeah. This is the kind of stuff that makes, uh, you know, ledges, cliffs in general, usually pretty good for the Terran. Um, yeah, and just denying more creep spread here from Sue, taking away some map control from this player that's been really against the ropes in the late stages. He's finally getting spy units. Corrupt is starting to join the field here. I actually really like the Corruptor choice. Uh, Mutus, I think, would be picked off very easily, but a Corruptor can float above the army for some time. Yeah. It's, uh, it's armored, it's high in hit points. Damage output's not too bad either. It's just not as fast. Well, those mules, though. <laughs> a ton of mules just went down that, uh, that goal base. Well, good news income is going to spike up 3k at least. Yep, 3.3. Just watch it on the graph. Yeah, Suhu is... 4,000. Uh, 4,000 is pretty nice, Maynard. 4,000 is yeah, pretty... Yeah, it's not bad. It's not bad. Good is almost as rich as base trade TV. Huh. Almost. I like the inference that we're rich. Yeah, yeah, I love to do that. I love to make people think that things are more successful than they really are. Uh, but <clears throat> we have a pre-split here from Gumiho. He's ready for these banelings. And his units, uh, again, have to stress, are very heavily upgraded against this Zerg army, which is not so much. There are a lot All of banelings in play. 28 of them. Yeah, got to be very careful against banelings. When, I mean, when the bailing count just seems infinite, it doesn't actually matter how good your micro or splits are. Right, and we're kind of approaching this number, not yet, but even if it's Marauders soaking the bailing hits, there's so many bailings that, yeah, the Marauders are going to die too. You know, just spreading out small pockets of units just to chip away damage wherever we can. Maybe split Zeus' focus a little bit, but uh, yeah, it's a lot you of know, Zerg army here. Both players are maxed out with a pretty sizable and similar bank. I think Gumio mm. trying to deny bases and take the slow victory is not a bad move. Like, yes, there's a kill move that maybe you go in, but you also risk throwing the game. Whereas if you keep denying hatcheries and killing drones, eventually Sue's going to bleed out. Yeah, Gumio has got this high ground here. He's off creep. He has another priest blade, a ton of marauders. And just targeting down this hatchery is a nice move from Gumiho. He does get it. And he yeah. pulls back to his army. Very smart moves. Very smart way to handle himself here. Control of the army is also really good too. Uh, we don't see a lot of Marines on the front line. Just a couple of them here and there. And for the most part, Gumi has been doing this thing where, like, again, it's not these unintentionally leaving part of his army behind. Like, it's super AFK. He's just splitting and wants to make sure he doesn't dedicate too far. He doesn't know that there's no Infestors, but he's playing as if there were this whole time. Yeah, pre-splitting all the time. I mean, obviously, this is pretty good against Banelings as well. The Banelings come in, but there is still so much bio left over once all that is done. And I, he is just I kind of feel like starting to... It doesn't really matter that Gumio wins or loses these fights, because Sue's still so hungry behind this. He tries to take another base, and that's a nice move, but... 46 Lings? Now he's going to be Larva-starved. Yeah, uh, it's an interesting choice to just spend that all into Zerglings. Uh, the Zerglings aren't super upgraded. 
three three about to finish with the Terra and he's about to get he's about to get that plus three armor. Yeah, that'll be really nice. Nice touch, especially with the plus two finishing up for the melee. Oh, this is the cusp of a big engagement. There's so many corruptors in the sky, and I really don't think that Gumi is worried about Broodlords. Those are really anti medevac units, is what they are. Gumi got away with medevacs for so long in this game. Yeah. Yeah, it just makes me think about those medevacs, like that five medevac commando squad floating through the middle of the map, just causing all kinds of problems with Sue's. Like, whenever he leaves, the medevacs just hit wherever he's not. Oh, that was an annoying one of mine. Let's see what we dealt yeah. with, though. Um. Nervoth, I guess, got his shirt in the mail. That's kind of cool, dude. A lot of people getting nice. shirts today. Which is frustrating because mine still hasn't even shipped yet. But hey, do us a favor. If you guys are getting anything cool base trade related in the mail, always tweet it at us. Love seeing those things. Uh, nice yeah, focus fire on the mailings. That was sick. Yeah. That, that was not like a move. That was focus fire straight up. Comes down to the right side too. Gold base going to die. This army trades out decently. Attack in the north finally gets cleaned up. A Gumiho. He's just not giving Sue any room to breathe. Yeah, it's like death by a thousand cuts here. And the cuts are being made with very scary plus three weapons by the, by the Terran army. The Corruptors are coming in and they're eating these medevacs up. The medevacs do go down. Uh, but Gumiho, just with so much bio, is still alive. Yeah, Chasing it's kind of and deceptive. engaging the Zerg army. With no medevacs in play, Sue actually has a much worse army. Consider Sue's got like 20 or 30 supply in those Corruptors. Yeah. He's got all Corruptors, and it's not like he can turn them into Broodlords. That's yes, uh, just Corruptors floating around getting killed by Marines right now. Yeah. Each stim starts starting Gumiho pretty bad, but that's going to be it finally with the GGs. The series comes to a oh. close, and we are done with the day. We made it. We did. Gumiho Congratulations will be to Gumiho. your victor. Well played, mate. This Gum Gumiho, can he be stopped, guys? He's won... The last three online tournaments I've seen him make the finals in, he's won them. Yeah, Gumiho is actually super sick right now. Like, if, if there was like StarCraft player stock, buy Gumiho. Seriously, buy, buy, buy. Like, he yeah. is. Bye, bye, bye. <laughs> Out that door, baby. Bye, bye, bye. Uh, Gumiho <laughs> is just seriously winning everything right now. And I expect him to keep playing well because what I love about this is this isn't like a fad. This isn't like Gumiho is. Someone who's come out of nowhere and he's going to last for a day. Gumi's been playing for so long. He's always been consistently good. It's just lately he's been consistently very good. Yeah. He's just he's just broken through that like glass ceiling of where whatever was holding him back from like the really big wins. And I just I want to see this translate into the big offline tournaments as well. Yeah. I'm, it's uh, one thing to crush the online tournaments, but the big money. A lot of that is in the... Well, not only the money, but like huge glory. Sponsors, etc. I think it was offline tournaments. Holy shit. Yeah, um, yeah, I'm right there with you, man. Um, I got to talk to you about something after the cast is done. So let's wrap up real quick. Ladies and gentlemen, first off, thank you for watching the LA League every Tuesday. Um, hope you had a good time. Tomorrow morning, I'll be back. Um, probably solo casting. Although, to be honest, if my allergies are kicking in, we will reschedule. But we have a, the Corsair Cup season finals happening tomorrow. So that should be some good times. Uh, Neeb is the only player who couldn't make it because he is going back to Korea, actually, I think as we speak even. So he'll hopefully be participating in some of Lima Leagues and BTSLs in the future, but he's uh, unable to attend the monthly finals, season finals. Kind of sucks. That being said, uh, lots of good stuff constantly going on on the channel. Twitch making a lot of this happen. Big love to Twitch. So sub, guys. It's the best way to pay them and us back all at the same time. Save esports, save us, save you, pay Maynard, all that good stuff. It covers everything. <laughs> Uh, Corsair is also another big sponsor here on the channel. Click all the affiliate links down below if you want to check out and buy some of their gear. Give us some credit back for it, which is nice. But Maynard, I'll give you the final say-sos uh, after I do one last shout-out for myself. If you guys haven't noticed, I've been advertising this a lot because I've been streaming a lot more on my own channel um, outside of Base Trade TV hours because I've heard your guys' voices over the years. You really don't care if I'm streaming World of Warcraft or other games here on Base Trade TV, so... Uh, we keep it on all my personal channel, twitch.tv underscore or slash riff underscore king. So R A F underscore K I N G. It's just like my Twitter without the Z, without the Z. So if you guys give me a follow over there and catch me live, I certainly would appreciate it. I've also got some fun emotes too, which you can maybe take advantage of or not. But Maynard, speaking of streaming on a personal stream, sell out, buddy. You get the last five minutes here before we take off. Sure. Um, on Twitch TV, Maynard, I'm going to be live in just over seven hours. 
um, to do some Zerg ladder. I'm going to be doing a, I think I'm going to repeat my scouting focus goal because I didn't have time to make the artwork assets for a different focus goal. So I'm just going to repeat the one I did last time and it did pretty well last time. So I'm hoping to improve my score there. You can follow me on, on my channel. Just click on my name and Twitch chat or just go to twitch.tv slash man and follow. Um, I have a sub button. If you want to support me, please do. Um, if, if not, just come on down, hang out, see if you like it. And if you do follow, do whatever you like. And, uh, it's gonna be good. It's gonna be about three, three or four hours a ladder, and then I'm probably going to sleep for the rest of the day because um, I, I just haven't been sleeping very well. Yeah, I hear you, man. I've been having trouble sleeping too. Uh, now I'm actually gonna try something, guys. 99.9% .9 of the time, we host somebody as soon as we're done. I want to see how the viewership number carries over to a vodcast. So if you guys just woke up or joined us recently, I'm going to rebroadcast slash vodcast this Alima League that we just finished casting. Even if you know the scores and who won, like every single game today went to the ace match, and there was a lot of very entertaining games. And we had some really good series too. So um, maybe you'll enjoy this, but if you take off, take care. Either way, I'm just testing the vodcast to see how this works. It's still a new feature. It's three days old. Um, I want to say really quick as well, because some people have expressed concern that vodcasting will become too popular of a thing with us. I don't plan to vodcast everything. In fact, I've, I actually talked about this on Nate's stream quite a bit, but for those that weren't there for it, I think community building is stronger than the extra like $7 or whatever we might make in ad revenue from vodcasting all day. So hosting is definitely still a big deal for me. And I think vodcasting helps some people get caught up in things. There's a definite balance and we're going to look for that balance going forward. But I think it's a really cool feature and I'm glad we can use it. So again, thank you, Manor, for joining me today. Big thank you to Akarasi. My pleasure. The end of the cast, 26 months. This fun cast. Thanks as always, Rifkin. Thank you for joining me, sir. Uh, here for pizza. Oh, fuck. I want pizza now. Thank you for the two months. Oh. And uh, that's going to send us off. So, again, we're going to play some commercials at the end of the stream. We're going to go to a vodcast. Thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you tomorrow morning. Bye-bye.